Right, hello everybody. Um, what I've got here, just set up a basic third person uh, Unreal level. Uh, if you run around, you get your little grey guy, he runs around the place, and there's not much functionality going on. You've got your typical movement controls and everything else, but what we're going to be showing today is just a real simple system. I just want to get a basic mechanic going uh, of just collecting a coin or something and adding that to the screen to show that you've got points, you've got score. Uh, so how do we do that? One of the first things I'll say to do is to bit of housekeeping, but keep, keep things clean, is to make some folders. So I'll right click on content here and say new folder and make and call this blueprint. So all the blueprints we make um, go in there. And the blueprints are basically little bits of code uh, and objects and things we can use to put into the world. And I'll we'll just clean up a little bit. Let's get rid of this and this. That's fine. So what we're going to make is the coin. So I'm going to right click in this blank area in the blueprints folder and say blueprint class and there's lots of different types here uh, have a little read through so they are but you've got actor you've got pawn you've got character so it's a different blueprint type one we're after is actor uh, this is an actor as an object which can be placed or spawned in the world and that's what we want so actor i'm going to call it bp underscore coin uh, bp for blueprint so it's easier to get into that naming convention so you know exactly what it is you're working with and it's easy to find as well. If you call everything BP at the start, then all the things you've got will, you know, when you search for something, just put BP at the start and you'll know you'll find your blueprints. So double click it, open it up, you'll get this little pop-up window. Um, it's think of you know, Unreal a bit like a like Chrome or something. See these tabs? They can be moved across, so a bit of screen saving. If you're doing this at home, obviously it's ideal if you had a second screen, everything like that. So Again, one of the first things then, so you're going to get this new screen, you're probably not sure what's going on, but what I like to do straight away is here, top left hand corner, add component, type the word scene, and drag that in. Um, what you'll get, you get, you have got a default scene route, but you've got no controls, you can't move or rotate or scale. If you make a new one and drag that on there, it allows us to do things like that when we put objects in. It's a bit of a weird thing, but there you go. So we've got a new scene, brilliant. I'm going to add a static mesh now. Uh, I don't think I added all the, um, all the, yeah, yeah, I haven't got hardly any models here, that's fine. I'll just use a cube for now. And um, like you did before, spacebar to move through you know, the actual controls, do that. I'm going to resize this a little bit. I'm sorry, that's my washing machine. Um, uh, yeah, so that's a cube. That's brilliant. Uh, I'm going to add a, if I type the word box now up here, I'm going to add the box collision. And this is kind of like, the invisible box around the object which allows you know the character or whoever to bump into it so i'm just going to shrink that down a bit you might, you might want to make it slightly bigger than what it is um you know we're not making a fighting game here we're like you know collision boxes or everything so slightly bigger who it doesn't matter at this point and i quite like putting a if you type rot for rotating movement click that um what rotating movement does it's already got a value in here and if we simulate there you go, sits and spins. So we'll compile that, we'll save that, go back to your map, and literally you can now drag these into your world. Um, and if I played, ooh, the spinning cube. So we run into it, nothing happens. And we can kind of hitch a ride on it. Excellent. All right, halfway there. So what do we do next? So one thing we need to do, if we click on the main character, he's in here, uh, right click on him and say finding content browser it will actually find it in here it's in third person blueprints blueprints brilliant so we double click him and you can see a load of stuff here which is probably going to scare you a little bit um, these are all like the movement controls the mouse input vr controls all this kind of stuff all linking to functions which we don't need to worry about but what we do want is we want to make a variable somewhere to store the score because remember we're making a scoring system here so over here on the left uh, it says variables. If I click on the plus, I'm going to type the word score because that means what I'm going to call it. Oh, can't do. oh, I've already got one. Sorry, that's my bad. You won't have this, but I've already made it. So I'm called score, and over on the right hand side, you can change its variable type and make sure you change it to integer. An integer is a whole number. Okay, you might want different things for different things like a decimal number that will be a float but we're just dealing with absolutes we want integers so save it and compile it and the score will be reset to zero brilliant so now we have a variable in our character which was going to store the score 
and we're going to try and do something with this here, with our coin, to add to that score every time the player walks into it. Okay, so first is first, we go, it, when we go back to our Blueprint coin, so if we have lost it, it's there in your world, you can right click, find it in your browser, double click, and it'll open it up here. Um, what we'll do, we'll go over to here, and this is something called the event graph. Brilliant. Um, what we want to look for, what I, I like to do is just delete all these. Unreal tries to give you these sort of typical things you might use to start with, but I just delete and start a nice fresh screen. Um, what we want is the character to walk into this, the bounding box here, this invisible box. So if we go back over to our event graph, with box selected, right click and say add event for box, collision, and on component begin overlap. You've got begin, you've got end, you've got hit, you've got all sorts of different things here, but we're interested in begin overlap. So when something overlaps with this, something's going to happen. All right. Uh, we drag out from other actor because if I, yeah, other actor, we need to do something called casting. Cast to third person character. Um, if you think of like all these little these things here, this coin, this character. They're all their own little separate models and bits of code, and they don't know how to talk to each other uh, at this point, so you have to cast to the other one. So we're in the coin, and it's saying, right, when you do, when, when something hits it, go look at the third-person character. And this is where all the information of the third-person character is kept. We made that variable score, so we drag out from here, and we're going to say set score. There we go. And this will appear. Um, we're going to attach this little line here to this. So it's like it all flows. So when the character, oh sorry, when, when someone hits this invisible box, look at the character, go over to the score variable we've done, and set it. And then it's set to zero. Uh, we need to drag out from this little green line, press the plus button, and it will say integer plus integer. Yes, please. Uh, and here, from the top one, I'm going to drag out. I'm going to type the word score again. And uh, we might need to drag a tick off context sensitive and say get score I'm going to drag this target here back to this uh, you could do it the other way around as well probably easier because you don't have to do the context sensitive but that's going to get the score value so get the score value again add let's say 10 so we're adding 10 to score setting the score now to be 10 uh, we're then going to there's a quick little debug thing if we do print screen uh, sorry print string and what we're going to print to the, uh, the string is this, and it will convert the integer into a string. It's just taking a number into, into letters, basically. And then we're going to destroy actor. So we're going to make the actor disappear and destroy itself. That's the bit of code. So if we compile it and save it and run into the world, if I press play, I'll just wait for that mouse cursor thing to disappear. There's ourselves running around. If we run into the object, boom, 10. Right, let's quickly test out if I make a few more. So if I hold Alt, drag, there we go, so I run around again. Do, do, do. And 10, 20, 30, 40. Brilliant. Score system. Woo!